Before we had the panel televisions that we have today, such as plasma, LCD, LED, OLED, and QLED, the global population only knew of one type of television picture system, what is looked on today as the dreaded CRT. In the beginning, it was a glass tube with a vacuum valve at the back of it, producing electrons. In the black and white days, a couple of guns to produce black and white picture, yoke, deflection coils, and a phosphorus coating at the front of the screen. Later on, colour was introduced. Same format, but you had three different colour guns inside the picture tube. In the 80s and 90s, we were introduced to projection television systems. Instead of having a glass tube, you had three colour guns. So what's the fundamental difference between the two? Well, old mate's going to give you the basics. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. I thought while we've got the building a PC for my rear projection television on hold till Thursday when I can get the bits and pieces that I need to get, I'd explain pretty much the difference between your old school CRT television, glass tube, and a projection television and give you the basics of it without blinding you with a lot of science. For the best part, as I said, for the best part of you know, 50, 60 years, we only knew about one type of TV. And that was a CRT glass tube. How did that work? Well, simply put, you had a vacuum tube on the back of it producing electrons. You, if you had black and white or color, you would have an electron gun or electron color guns inside the tube. You had a yoke, you had a deflection, magnetic deflection system to deflect the colours all over the place, depending on which colours got to go where on the screen at what time. You had a phosphorus coating at the front of the screen, maybe a tint of some sort. And the image would scan down the screen. As far as you were aware, the image is moving. In the 80s and the 90s, we got introduced, at least here in Australia, to project and projection television. So what's the difference between your old glass tube and a projection system? You don't have the tube. Instead of having everything inside a glass tube, so your vacuum valve, your color guns, your yokes, your deflections, everything like that, that is removed from the tube and you end up with the three color guns. A red gun, a blue gun, and a green gun. Okay, so how does that all work? If it's not inside a glass tube with deflection and yoke and vacuum tubes and everything, how does it all come together then? The three guns are arranged in a CRT like that. So you have two guns at about that angle and a center gun. Now, depending on the layout of the guns, in the case of my rear pro, I think it's red, blue, and green. So blue straight up and red and green are at about an angle like that. It's about 45 degrees of an angle between the guns and the glass in the top back corner of the television. In the case of a projector, say one that hangs from the roof or one that you sit on a coffee table, the guns are basically again at about that angle okay so the guns aren't dead straight they sort of angle the guns up or down depending on the manufacturer of the projector okay so if that's the case how does how do you get the colors to line up in a glass tube television that's done by deflection coils lining the colors up it's done automatically for you in a projection system, it is not. You have to do your convergence setup. 
Now, how do you tell, and we'll have a look at my Rear Pro in just a moment on how you do this. How do you tell if all your colors are lined up? You have what's called the convergence cross. Now, you've got to remember one thing. With a rear projection television, like I said, you still have a vacuum tube at the back of each of the color guns. You still have deflection coils. You still have a yoke. But it's not encased in a glass tube. It's not encased in a vacuum. The color guns themselves are encased in a vacuum, but the whole TV is not. You have what's called your convergence setup. We're going to have a look at that shortly. Projection TVs were the forebearer to our big screen cinemas that we have in our homes today. In the 90s, we were introduced to digital light projectors, which worked in a similar scenario to your rear projection television. Instead of though having three color guns at the bottom of the unit, you had a lens which shone the image onto a mirror. The mirror expands it and sends it over to the screen. Now the screens on a rear projection television are phosphorus like, and they are corrugated to spread the light around so that you get a nice image on your television. Rear projection to me is the next best thing to a panel type image. In the case of a roof mounted projector, instead of it all being enclosed inside a box, for example, what you would have from Panasonic or Sony or Hitachi, um, who else was there at that stage? RCA, I think had one was out as well, although that might have been built by Panasonic, I'm not sure. I know Magnavox had one out as well. Um, whether that was built by Sony, I don't know. But essentially, there were two types of the mounted projector. In some houses, they would mount it in the middle of the room and it would shoot up to the screen at that angle. In other houses, you'd hang it from the roof. And depending on where you were would depend on whether the projector was behind the screen, say in a hall environment or a, a, a school environment where the projector would shoot to the back of the hall, you'd have a mirror at the back of the hall showing forward, or whether the projector was dead set in the fair income department right in the middle of the room shining down on the screen. The CRT projectors can chew as much power up as a plasma screen. Because what you've got to remember is, instead of having one tube with one vacuum tube or vacuum valve on the back of it, you have three of them. So you have three heater voltages, you have three flyback transformers in some cases, not all, and you have three high tension systems in it as well. We're going to go over to my beloved Pioneer rear projection. And I'm going to show you what I mean by lining up convergence and what the difference is with doing convergence on a rear projection compared to a traditional cathode ray tube. Okay, so here we are at the rear pro. And uh, not only is the television big, one thing you guys haven't seen is the size of the remote that Pioneer was using at the time. If you've uh, been around Pioneer stuff long enough, you'll know that their remotes back when they were in the 80s and 90s were, or in some cases even the 70s, the remotes were massive. The one thing with this remote is, except my camera won't focus, it's also for laser disc and DVD. So let's turn the TV on. Oh, that's right. It's the easiest thing to turn on, this one. Can't remember how to turn it on. That's terrible, isn't it? Hang on a minute. All right, well, got it on, which was lucky. So what I'm talking about with convergence, if we have a look up here, is uh, that one, isn't it? So that's all your contrast and everything. And if we go back to menu, oh. Yeah, 
initial setup. Convergence, okay? So if we have a look at convergence and we say go to natural wide, this is your adjustments, okay? Now what this does is you can see here, I'm not bang on. You see there, the blue is just out. Now in the case of a rear projection, okay, we would go, oh, hang on, how do you do this? There it is. Okay, it's been so long since I've adjusted the convergence on this. But if we move it back a bit, okay, you can see that the blue is nearly gone, all right? Now, if you have a look here, the green's just a bit high. So, we go center point. Okay. We want to adjust the red up until the green disappears. And the blue is disappeared. And then we adjust the outer point. We see there. And it'll trace around the screen to make sure that it's actually in the right position. We'll go over to the middle. Okay. And that's actually in the right spot. So, your, your, your convergence system was your everything. Now, the other one you can do is you can go into cinema wide and you can see that it's actually in the right spot. So, what is the difference between convergence with a rear pro and, say, your old school CRT? Well, the convergence and the colour timing was all done, obviously, by your deflection coils that would adjust how the beam was sent around the tube to be in focus. Now, unfortunately, the one thing I can't do here, which I don't think this is actually going to come up properly. Um, no, it's not. Okay, I can't even put a DVD on. But if you have a look here at pour, okay, now... Remember, this is running um, different modes, so I can change the mode. Where is it? That's not what I wanted. Input. So this is called cinema wide. This is natural wide, okay? If I can find it, cinema wide there, AV front, analog TV, poor signal. That'll be right. But you can see here, if I go back to, uh, where is it? Uh, I can never remember where it is. You can see the convergence problem in this. Okay, let me, uh, so that looks right. The yellow looks properly. You can see there, there's no colour problem there. The S video looks right. If we move the camera up a bit. The normal looks all right to me. It probably doesn't to you, but it does to me. Now, you're not, obviously not going to see it with the grain. But have a look at the purple. The blue's out of whack, right? The blue is too far this way, right? But here it looks fine. What you have in this thing here is there are three guns across the center here, all right? It's a bit dusty. They fire up to a precision cut and precision polished mirror, which is about half the width of the screen. It doesn't take up the whole screen. It takes up from about there to there, all right? Right at the back. I'll show you where the mirror is actually because I can the mirror is basically here where my finger is all right 
this is the back of it. All right. So the mirror is what shoots the three colours up. And then this plastic screen is what lines everything up and makes it look good. Now, if I can bring up an image. Um, just while that boots up, I'm going to have a coffee. I don't know what's in this at the moment. Let me just hang on. Let me see what's in it and we'll come back. All right, I found a DVD that we can probably use. Oh, that's not so good. Hang on. All right, I found something we can play. Um, I found a VHS tape we can play, and I should be able to show you the uh, how this works. So let me rewind this tape, and we'll come back. Okay. Couldn't get the VHS to work, so I'm just using a... Mr. Bean DVD for this, but I want to show you what I mean by convergence and how to set this up properly. Okay, so we go back to natural wide. Okay, now if I move the red all the way over, and you can probably just see the red starting to come out of alignment. Okay, so you can see there I've moved the red out of alignment. And if I push set with that, you can see there. Now look at the picture. You can see the red is out of alignment. Right? We've got red there. You can see here it's all blurred out. Now with a standard CRT tube, this was not such a, a problem. Okay. Now if I bring the red back into focus... All the way back in all the way back in and there we are the reds now in focus if we go back to this you'll see that the red is now in focus now with a rear projection television you sort of need to be about a couple of meters from it to get a decent picture all right but apologies for the scrolling lines but you can see now that the red is back in focus Rear projection TVs and projection TVs, you need to make sure that your convergence is in the right spot. So you can see there that if you've been using a conventional CRT, you didn't have to worry about your colours getting out of whack. The way a colours would get out of whack in a standard glass tube TV would be that the deflection coils were not working. But in a rear projection, you can actually line the colours up manually using that convergence system. When we get the parts for the computer for the rear pro, undoubtedly I'm going to have to play with the convergence. Reason being is that the output of the graphics card might wreak havoc with the convergence on that rear projection TV. The one thing that um, I can't do is give you any audio at the moment. Now I can once we get the computer up and you'll see what I mean about the crystal clear audio you get from some of these rear projection televisions. But there we are. Convergence and the basics between rear projection and projection TV versus your standard glass tube CRT. Catch you tonight, guys. Cheers.